Welcome back everyone. This vlog is going to be a little bit different. Instead of being a compilation of an entire session, this is going to be a couple of different hands I played throughout 2023. I picked out various hands that didn't make other vlogs, so I hope that you guys enjoy. Chaser, who is an extremely aggressive player, opens it from early position to $40. It folds around to me in the straddle and I look down at pocket kings. I 3-bet to $200. He 4-bets to $540. This is definitely a situation where I can elect to call. I think when he's four betting from early position, he doesn't have too many folds. I shove all in for 2K effective. He snap calls. He flips over ace king and we run out the board, which is the four of hearts, six of spades, two of clubs, the ace of hearts, and the seven of spades. Unfortunately, he hits one of his three outers and he scoops this 4K pot. In this hand, we are playing the knit game. The loser of the knit game is going to owe $400 to the rest of the table. Craig opens up to $85 in the low jack over two limps. Tony makes the call and I 3 bet to $340 with Queen Jack offsuit in the cutoff. Craig makes the call and we go heads up to the flop with the pot at $845. The flop is all clubs with the four of clubs, three of clubs, ace of clubs, giving me the jack high flush draw. Craig checks and I decide to check back. I think I'm going to be checking back relatively frequently on this board, even though it's an ace high board with the monotone nature. I'm going to have a lot of pocket pairs, especially without a club. But I'm also going to be checking some stronger hands as well, some stronger ace x combo, some of them with a club. I'm going to have some stronger pocket pairs that contain a club as well. And I'll have a small frequency of flop flushes. It turns the six of diamonds and he decides to lead out here for $600. Pretty sizable bet given the pot size. It's hard for him to have too many super strong hands for this size as I do have the jack of clubs. So I block hands like king jack, queen jack, and jack 10. I think for the most part his flushes are going to be in the Broadway region. And the ace of clubs on the board diminishes his flushes even further. So I think at best he has a medium ace x combo here. I think... He's going to go all in pre very often with ace king and ace queen here. And he shouldn't have too many of the offsuit combos. Because of that, I decided to turn my hand into a bluff and I shove all in for 2150. He tanks for a very long time and ultimately he does flick in the call. He flips over a pretty surprising hand as he shows the 5 3 of hearts for the open ender and bottom pair. I'm actually pretty live against that hand with the queen and the jack as well as any club. But unfortunately, none of those come in as the river is the 4 of spades and he scoops this 5.1k pot. The Dockefell opens this one up to $75 from middle position. Andrew calls in the small blind and Amit calls in the big blind. I think I have a pretty easy complete as I look down at queen 10 offsuit in the straddle. We go four ways to the flop with the pot at $300 and I flop the open ender on the jack of hearts, six of clubs, nine of hearts. It checks to Amar and he continues for a small size here. Andrew bumps it up to $400. I think Andrew's going to have a lot of flush draws here. He's definitely going to have some sets here in hands like jack nine. Although I expect him to primarily be three betting hands like pocket jacks and pocket nines preflop, especially when he's in the small blind. There's a ton of draws here, and I think with him having a relatively thin value region here, he's going to have a lot of bluffs. Regardless, I think my hand has a ton of equity here. I expect Amar only to really be continuing with very strong hands. I think if he has a weaker jack x combo, he's probably going to be folding here if I call. But realistically, it's his sets, his over pairs, and hands like ace jack, maybe king jack. So after a mint folds, I elect to make the call. Dockefell folds behind. And Andrew and I go heads up to the turn with the pot at $1,200. The turn is the nine of clubs, bringing in the second flush draw and pairing the board. Andrew continues here for half pot, $600. I definitely have a hand here that's pretty frail. I don't really want to be continuing here with a call, especially given the stack to pot ratio. As the pot was bloated multi-wave pre-flop, especially with the straddle. I think this card also reduces a little bit more of Andrew's value. And although it's hard for me to have too many value hands here, I think it's more likely I do have some of these value hands like the Jack-9 and 6-9 combos that Andrew doesn't have in his range. Even though Andrew's going to be bluffing here very often, he's still ahead of Queen High. So I like to turn my hand into a bluff here and I raise to $1,600. He quickly folds and I scoop this pot. Greg opens up this hand to $25. I flat with pocket fours and the hijack. Yusuf calls in the small blind and Joe calls in the big blind. We go four ways to the flop with the pot at $100. The flop is the eight of clubs, six of hearts, four of diamonds, giving me bottom set. Greg C bets here multi-way for $100, so a full pot size bet. I think he's going to have a ton of value here. A lot of over pairs are going to be on this board, especially when he's betting for this sizing. Given that, I think I want to be raising my hand at a very high frequency. I bump it up to $300. And to my delight, both Yusuf and Joe call in the blinds. It gets back around to Greg and it gets even crazier as he shoves all in for 1975. Obviously, I'm never folding here. He still has a lot of over pairs. I think it's very unlikely that Yusuf or Joe are beating me. I think if they did have a hand like pocket eights, pocket sixes, or seven five, they would have re-raised me on the flop. Regardless, Greg's gonna have a bunch of over pairs, so it's a pretty easy all-in for me. I call the 1975. Yusuf folds and Joe tanks for a long time, and she actually decides to call as well, which is super surprising to me. And out of nowhere, we're playing a 6.3k pot multi-way. 
We decide to run it twice and we flip over our hands. Joe has six four of clubs for bottom two pair. Greg does have pocket aces for the over pair. The first run out is the seven of spades, three of clubs, and I scoop that pot. Unfortunately, I'm not able to hold on the second board as the turn is the ace of spades and the river is the jack of hearts, giving Greg top set. He scoops the other half of this pot. A recreational player limps from under the gun and I open up ace three of spades in the plus one position. And essentially the entire table calls as we go six ways to the flop with the pot at $305. The flop is the jack of spades, ten of spades, five of spades, giving me the nut flush. I definitely want to start building this pot. It's definitely likely that some of my opponents connected with this board. Give me some weaker flushes, a lot of hands in the Broadway region, some pairs plus flush draws. I continue here for half pot with a bet of $150. It folds all the way around to the initial limper and he makes the call. We go to the turn, which is the three of clubs. And I think I want to be barreling pretty large here. I expect jack x combos and pairs plus flush draws to be continuing at a high frequency. He could also have a straight draw to go along with his flush draw, something like king queen offsuit with a spade. I continue for $450 and to my delight, he shoves all in for his remaining $1150. I snap call with the nuts. We go to the river, which is the 10 of hearts. Not the river I was hoping to see as jack 10 and pocket fives get there, but I'm still pretty happy with my hand. And luckily for me, my opponent does flip over pocket fives and he hits the full house on the river and he scoops this 3k pot. Stacks have started to get incredibly deep in this 5-5-10 game. I make it pretty loose open with the ace-5 offsuit from early position to $50. It folds around to the button who 3-bets to $175. This player has been extremely active at this point. He's 3-betting hands like jack-6 offsuit. So I expect him once again to have a pretty wide range of hands here. The straddle decides to cold call and it gets back to me. And I think a 4-bet makes a lot of sense here. Obviously, ace-5 offsuit is not a very strong hand but versus an opponent that's going to be three betting a very high frequency and versus a relatively capped range that cold called in the straddle. I think I have a lot of fold equity. I bump it up to $725. The button thinks for a while and he does make the call. I expect him to have a somewhat stronger hand now that he's continued with a call here, but I'd expect him to be as wide as most suited connected hands, any pocket pair and broadways. We go heads up to the flop with the pot at $1,800. The flop is the jack of spades, four of clubs, three of hearts, giving me the gut shot with my overcard. And I continue with a small sizing of $475. This is a board I'm going to be betting at very high frequency, especially if my opponent has a very wide range here. He does make the call, so I do expect him to have a pair of very high frequency here, something like a jack X or a pocket pair. He could have a similar hand to me, something like ace deuce. I also expect him to be continuing at some frequency with hands like king queen, especially with a backdoor flush draw. He turn is the six of diamonds, giving me the open ender, and I decide to barrel here for $11.50. Really trying to apply pressure on all those pocket pair hands. Hands like pocket 10s, 9s, and 8s are going to be pretty uncomfortable facing a barrel here. He does have a hand like ace 5, ace 4, ace 3, or ace deuce. He's also going to be folding here high frequency. And any of those hands that had double back doors that didn't pick up equity are probably going to be folding as well. He unhappily folds and he really wants me to show my hand, but he's less thrilled when I show him the ace 5 offsuit and I scoop this 4k pot. In this hand, early position opens to $50, the cutoff calls, and I squeeze pocket 9s from the button to $200. The opponent from the last hand cold four bets to $750 from the straddle. I continue with a call and we go heads up to the flop with the pot at $1,600. The flop is the 10 of diamonds, nine of spades, six of diamonds, giving me middle set. My opponent checks, but I still want to try to get this all in by the river. I think he's going to have a lot of ace high hands and hands like king queen, but there's a lot of draws out there and I expect him to call at least once if he has a diamond. So I continue for $625. He makes the call and we go to the turn, which is the ace of diamonds. Overall, a very good turn card for me, as I would expect my opponent to primarily be c-betting on the flop with all of their flush draws. I also have the nine of diamonds, so I block some of his flushes. And based on the action on the flop where he checked, I expected him to have a lot of ace-x combos here. So now he should have a lot of top pair combos like ace-king, ace-queen, possibly two pair if he decided to check ace-10 or ace-6. He's also going to have some pocket pairs with the diamond, so I do think I want to be continuing here. I decided to use a smaller size here, as I do want to get called by all of his ace-x combos, as well as his pocket pairs that do not contain a diamond. I continue for $750 and my opponent decides to apply the maximum amount of pressure and he shoves all in for $35.50 versus this opponent. I don't think I can fold here, especially with the nine of diamonds. If he has me beat, he has me beat. He's going to be shoving here with some worse value, like two pair combos. He's going to have hands like ace king, ace queen with the diamond. And even if he does have a flush, I have the opportunity to boat up. I make the call and this pot balloons up to 10K. The river is the five of hearts. I show my set. He says I'm good and I scoop this massive pot. I see four limps ahead of me and I open up ace queen offsuit in the big blind to $75. The early position and the middle position limper both call. We go three ways to the flop with the pot at $245. The flop is the queen of diamonds, eight of diamonds, three of diamonds, giving me top pair, top kicker, along with my nut flush draw. I continue here for a small sizing. I'm going to be using small sizes on monotone boards, especially multi-way. The early position limper min clicks me to $160. My opponent obviously can't have the nuts, and I think the min click is going to be relatively weak here. I bump it up to $500, and he makes the call. 
At this point, at minimum, I expect him to have top pair or a pocket pair with a diamond. He definitely could be beating me with a flopped flush or a set. Definitely possible that my re-raise was a little ambitious here. We go to the turn, which is the six of hearts, and I decide to shove in the remaining 1125. Given the stack to pot ratio, this is probably fine, but it might be a little bit large versus such a concentrated range. I've heavily condensed my opponent's range to very strong combos when I three bet them on the flop. And I might realistically only be getting called by ace queen, king queen, and queen jack with a diamond as far as hands that I'm beating. But regardless of what he has, I should have relatively good equity with the ace of diamonds here. He does make the call and we go to the river, which is the queen of clubs. He flips over the rivered full house as he flops top two pair with the queen eight suited. I definitely think I might have overvalued my hand a little bit, but I think it's close. Regardless, it would have gone in on the river. Later in the session, early position opens to $50. The early position, middle position, and cutoff players all call. I look down at pocket fives in the big blind, and I have a pretty easy call here. The straddle calls behind, and we go six ways to the flop, which is the six of hearts, five of hearts, four of spades, giving me middle set on a very connected board. I don't often play a leading strategy, but I definitely think this is a board that I could lead on. On these well-connected boards that really hit the big blinds range, I think it makes sense to lead at some frequency. But this time I decide to check. It checks around to the cutoff player and he bets $75. Way too small for me and I bump it up to $325. The straddle agonizingly folds and it gets back to the cutoff who makes the call. I expect the cutoff to have a lot of draws here. Flush draws, hands like pocket seven, seven, six. He's gonna have some over pairs and possibly two pair. I'd really expect him to re-raise with all of his straights a lot of his two pair and his sets here. Given the connectivity of the board, we go to the turn, which is the two of clubs. Not the turn card I'm thrilled to see as my opponent does get there with hands like four three and pocket threes, as well as the three X of hearts. But much better than the other end of the straight is I would expect my opponent to continue more often with eight X and seven X combos. I decide to pot control here and check and my opponent rips in 1125, putting me in a very uncomfortable spot on this four straight board. Ultimately, I decided my opponent had enough draws here as well as worse hands like pocket fours and two pair. I also have a chance to boat up if he has a straight, although a lot of his made straights do have a pair as well. So he's going to be slightly blocking those. I put in the 1125. We go to the river, which is thankfully the two of hearts, giving me a full house. I flip over pocket fives for the rivered full house. And I actually was ahead when we got it in on the turn as my opponent ends up showing six deuce. He turned two pair and he would have rivered the full house as well. But thankfully my full house was a little bit stronger. Thanks everyone for tuning in. I really had a lot of fun highlighting some of those hands from 2023. I actually have enough content that I'm going to make a second part to this series. After that, I'll be returning to the standard format where each vlog is a single session, and I'll see you guys next time.